Welcome to the map Forts of Aizen in BFME 1 on the patch 2.22 for a replay cast in an evil versus evil matchup between Sariman versus Sauron. If Isengard against Mordor. Orpid opening for the Mordor player, Matthew. And the Uruks are marching forward because the plan is to deal damage. So it's going to be old school opening. Two furnaces into the third furnace. So he's not grabbing any outer settlements. And also no Uruk pit opening, that means this Uruk has to deal a lot of damage and he might be potentially committing to the Orc pit, but smart move from Mordor to bring some Lumber Mill workers to this location and also cancelling the tower to get to save the money. So the Uruks have no choice but committing to this Lumber Mill. With the Warchan they will be able to destroy this super quickly, but even repairing this structure, even though it won't deny the destruction of this building, it will delay it and it's all about buying time. So the Warchant bears off and then the Orcs can deal much more damage to the Uruks. In the meantime, this settlement has been captured by the Mordor player Matthew. Now he has in total still two Lumber Mills up on the field. That means 10% discount on his uh, structures. He might go for the Orc Pit number two. In this matchup, you might need to go for multiple Orc Pits like two, three, even four is a possible option. In three furnaces, there was no threat on his P, so he didn't have to tower up. And he's going for the Uruk Pit. And the plan is to get the Uruk Pit to level 2. Because Berserkers are what you need in this matchup. They are super fast recruited. And they can easily deal with the Orc spam. But remember, Orcs are for free. So even if you deal with the Orcs, Mordor will not lose any resources out of that. In addition to that, he will even get power points from losing the Orcs as well. So Orc spam is definitely the way to go in an evil against evil matchup. It's good in Mordor Mirror matches. It's even better in Mordor against Isengard. So Orc Pit number 2 is going to be built up. Remember, each Orc will, you know, take you 28 seconds to be recruited. But it's going to be for free. And if you have like 3-4 Orcs, Orc Pits, you will get every around about 30 seconds 4 Battalions of Warriors. And in order to counter that, he needs to invest 210 resources on the Berserkers. The Uruk Pit just got level 2 though. That's pretty good. And um, the orcs are annoying. In a 1v2 situation, the Uruks might lose or will get heavily damaged. And that will potentially give the Mordor player the chance to get the orcs to level 2. Which will make it even, you know, harder. And the magical number we are looking for is level 3. So that's going to unlock the black orcs. A level 3 orc can easily 1v1 a Berserker too. What Mordor can do is to spam land all over the map. Because Aizen won't be able to get to the Tainted Land anytime soon. He might need to go for the Industry first. So before he gets Industry plus Land, you can at least, at bare minimum, place 3-4 Tainted Lands all over the map. Which will give you the, the playground you can fight on. Look, the three Orcs guarding the settlement over there. And that's going to be a big commitment. The Orc Pit number one is going to be taken down by these three Uruks with Warchant. Uh, towering up like crazy, but he has two more Orc Pits still going. He might lose one more of them. There is no Lumber Mill Worker for the repairing action, but it looks like he want to go for the Eco instead. Mm, it's okay, that's something you can always do, but there are too many towers now, with in total five towers shooting on this Uruks non-stop, dealing continuous DPS, and it will prevent Aizen to destroy this Slaughterhouse, which was also getting repaired by this Lumber Mill Workers. So pretty nice job here. The map is looking blue to me. So Isengard is definitely having a rough time. And hopefully the Berserker can make a difference. Never mind, he's gonna die to the Lumber Mill workers. So one of the changes we have done to the Berserker is if you don't fight with him, he will recover his HP back to full. But it's gonna take you some time. It's always nice to save your units because then you will have not to invest too much money into remaking them, you know? So this, uh, also the beautiful part about the Berserker is they deal also a great amount of damage to the structures. It's a level 2 building. Uh, you need to dodge this level 2 orc, bring them eventually to the tower. But Mordor is being careful. He's also creeping a lot. He was creeping the Vorklea in the middle of the map. And also the Vorklea at the top left side of the map will be taken. At least the lair will be taken. He might not be able to finish off the Vorks, but that's totally fine. He will get the power points and also the money for it. And Mathieu, the Mordor player, has already picked the industry up. He's going to use it on this slaughterhouse, which will also help it to level up faster. And once it's hitting level 2, you will get more money. 
And with level 3, it will also give you more money. In addition to that, it's going to become more tanky and also be able to shoot. That's um, a thing that's only available for the evil factions. Their resource buildings, once they hit level 3, are always going to be able to shoot. Something Gondor farms, blacksmiths or Rohan farms can't do. Plenty of orcs. Within total 3 orc pits. What Mordor could be doing, should be doing is to capture this outpost and build at least one more orc pit from this outpost to pressure the bottom side all over the no, all over the all the time. English heart. Um, then you can keep your three orc pits to pressure the middle and the top side instead. So you want to be pre pressuring every possible lane. In Forts of Eisen, there are three possible entrances lanes to the opposite side of the map. And with the orc pit at the bottom side, you don't need to be worried about the bottom side at all anymore, you know? So Eisen was able to recapture this settlement and he will also be able to recapture this settlement. He's gonna creep this with the war chanted berserkers and that's what he needs. He needs the power points for it. Uh, he has around about 1800. He might go for Lourdes. Lourdes might be a possible option here because earlier or later, you will need the damage leadership from Lourdes. The 60% DPS uh, will help you to kill the trolls a bit faster. He went for the Vork Riders, that's also a possible option. But remember later on you will have to deal with the Trolls and even Nazgûl's Witch King, so the Vorks will only have their impact in the in the mid game. And later on they will kind of fall off. So what you need is uh, an army of crossbowmen with heavy armor, fire arrow, and also you need the banner. Because the banner is quite cheap and having a level 2 unit is always rewarding, towering up. And also went for Sharku. And never my Lourdes. Lourdes has been recruited uh, using the cripple on the troll. The troll has to be careful. The tower is going to be built up very, very soon. Um, but he can always eat a orc or also a Lambir mill worker to get back to full HP. Plenty of orcs, but it looks like Mordor doesn't want to go for the ultimate lead game. He want to go for the combos as soon as possible. And with the drama troll, he want to go. He want to go for a fight. Eisen, though, will have a better eco now, with two Lambert mills out, one furnace at the outpost, and the Zitter giving you also continuous money. It's gonna be quite great. Uh, Lourdes will get the chance to kill this troll. That's a uh, int right there, intentionally feeding. You shouldn't be doing that. It will give Lourdes immediately a level up, and he will get one big step closer to his carnage and also to his leadership. So, I mean, it's expected that Mordor is the faction that will control the map for the majority of the time in this matchup. But if you have, if you get the chance to keep two Lambert Mills in an outpost under your control as Aizen, with the help of industry, you will still get to re uh, get the chance to recruit your army. And your army is always going to be stronger before the Witch King arrives. Because Drama Troll is basically like the War Chant, right? And, uh, but... Something you need to keep in mind, Mordor can't buy heavy armor. So heavy armor is a difference maker. Your trolls have to do a phenomenal job, but he lost one of the trolls. So that means he has only three more mountain trolls and rushing into the enemy lines with three mountain trolls all alone with only drama troll leadership might not be the smartest thing to do. And he can always backfire. And he has also idle orcs. So in this situation, you want to just send them forward. Um, Eisen should not be allowed to keep these Lambert Mills and should not be allowed to pressure you. He should be kind of forced to defend exclusively for the majority of the game, especially early mid game. Berserkers falling like, Christ, uh, like flies to the Pharaohs from the Orc combos. A rock throw has happened. Berserkers has a dodge chain, so they are actually surprisingly well against arrows because they have like built in dodge chains. When they get hit, they will die quickly, but you have the chance to dodge multiple arrows. So level 2 furnaces, that's pretty good. I like it. Level 3 furnace even over there, so it's quite beefy. Level 2 orcs and to only 2 combos. It's a land from uh, Mordor. This level 2 furnace is going to be taken down. No leadership on the trolls, no eye, no drummer has arrived yet. This output should be taken down. Industry being used on this furnace. Eco-wise, Mordor has 6,000 in the bank. It's 5 power points getting very close um, to the darkness. And his opponent, Flippy, has around about 2 power points in the bank. He was forced to go for the for the Palantir, for the resistance to fear. And now there are going to be 2 more combos. So he might save for the, for the Saruman. That's a possibility. 
You need to invest 5.5k for him. But he needs to be there very, very soon. Because the army of Isengard, I doubt that it's capable of keeping this army checked. And I believe before Saruman will arrive, there will be a Witch King. Because he now has the money for it. And will go for the Witch King. And there is no Drama Troll yet. Uh, Drama Troll is just coming. Without a Drama Troll, these combos are definitely not threatening. They have a good DPS, but they have not the tankiness. And now it's a different story. Now they will have much more damage and much more tankiness. And if you don't demolish structures in time, you will feed a lot of levels for these combos because the combat experience bonus from the Drummer Troll plus the Eye of Sauron will help them to level up way, way faster. Do not come between the Nazgul and the Spray, boys. There comes the leader of the Nine. The Witch King has arrived. In the combos, how can these two combos ever stop the Witch King? He's gonna use the Palantir for the, for the resistances to fear and also for the speed up bonus. The Witch King is diving in. There are not too many towers, but there comes a Saruman. And Saruman has the chance to turn. He's gonna use Fireball on the Witch King that's not gonna connect. Oh, it actually connected. Never mind, I take it back. That's amazing because Witch King has been killed and that's gonna stop the attack of the model player entirely and that will give room and window for Isengard to recover from the damage he just received. Zarman is definitely a hero. You need to be... Oh, I, I don't know about that one. Actually, it's a major cooldown. You just waste for one single combo. I think uh, Warmtong is an ability you want to save for the old infights because at some point the trolls will charge onto you and when you keep your Warmtong, it will create so much pressure on your opponent because he needs to always think about uh, the worst case scenario. The worst case is you taking the control of all his trolls over. And now you stole this combo, but they will not even die and he will get the chance to get back. It's a major mistake. Catapults are needed, but he's going for the siege towers. Um, siege towers are actually surprisingly tanky against arrows. And if you don't know, if you trample with the siege towers, it will always one shot the combos. So they, are, they should not be underestimated, even though I would still prefer the normal catapults over this. He's going for the armory one more time. I think he never purchased the heavy armor, but he needs it. And Isengard taking over the map. That's uh, something which should not be allowed. He even demolished the orpid over there. So he doesn't want to go for too much orcs. He only has one orpid now, one siege wards and one troll cage. Uh, Witch King, of course, will be revived for free, but it's going to take you four minutes in total. Darkness is going to be available for the next big fight. But I would still recommend to wait for the Witch King. It's a major damage armor leadership. You don't want to be missing out, you know? Rain is not available yet. Still two power points needed. This outpost has zero defense. It will go down. And demolishing structures would be helpful, even though they don't feed too many power points, but they still do feed. And it will help Isengard to reach the rain a bit faster. Now, he went for a normal, regular Nazgul who got damaged big time. Darkness has been used. As you can see, the map is turning dark. The units... Oh, what a juice. Beautiful. And Isengard still missing out one power point for the freezing rain. And not demolishing the structures will help uh, Mordor, obviously, to get to Baldrock a bit faster. The siege towers have no damage. They can't attack anything, but they can trample everything, okay? The Saruman has to be careful. There is just too much DPS on this army. If they get the chance to shoot on you, you will die. And Lourdes and the other combos or crossbowmen have to return. Now, crossbowmen is generally speaking good against Mordor. But whenever you see Mordor going for the combos, you need to go for the combos as well. So this way you have the strong front line with the Uruks in the front. You know what I mean? Saruman has to be careful, even though he's almost full HP, but it can change in a matter of seconds. There comes the big war chant on multiple crossbowmen. The damage is good, don't get me wrong, but they still need to invest like a few seconds to kill this, and that will give combos the chance, because you can't ignore the structure. If you ignore it, Lurtz is diving in. Nazgul, and there comes the freezing rain, that means no more leadership on this army. Lourdes is uh, dying for a reason, will go down, and the Nazgul will fall. Saruman was able to get... Did Saruman die too? Let me take a look into this. Yeah, Saruman died too. 
Uh, of course, with the, with the rain's effect, um, Mordor might need to disengage. Or he might keep going, because without the hero support and the Vorchan being all on cooldown, this combos will not be a threat. Now, it's arguable, this combo has no leadership, but nor does this combo have leadership, you know what I mean? The Witch King can actually fly in and deal damage, but you need to be, he needs to also be careful that everything is level 3 behind. So everything is going to shoot at him and deal not too much burst damage, but it will still deal great amount of damage to the Witch King. The Orphan will be rebuilt. And Aizen now has the chance to fill up the base again, but there is not much that can deal damage. The Trolls without leadership will die quickly to the arrows. And Isengard has still full map control. So what Isengard should be doing, in my opinion, is going for the Uruk Pit also in the in the outpost, here at this outpost. So you can bring out your army a bit quicker. In the lead game, it's all about quantity. It's all about the spam when you play the evil factions especially. And it's all about the eco advantage. So this outpost, of course, with zero protection will go down. There is no doubt about that one. And after the first couple of battles into this game, we have in total... 8 power points in the bank for the model player Matteo, okay? So he's 12 power points away from his Baldrog. And he's going for the Nazgûls, just why not? He will revive, he will have in total 3 Mordor airlines upon the field. And his opponent Flippy, um, who was forced to go for the, for the Tainted Land, has now only 2 power points in the bank. So Mordor is definitely ahead in the power point department. So if the game goes on longer, Mordor should be the one which is favorite is he will potentially and most likely get to unlock his Balrog a bit sooner. And Balrog against Aizen is a bit more effective than Balrog against Mordor. Because if you summon the Balrog underneath the army, uh, it will just win you the game, you know? You will just one-shot the army, and you can fly in. Oh, that's a risky move here from the Witch King. He will get chunked, and you see the Siege Tower is uh, going crazy. I don't know about this game, actually. <laughs> this is so funny. I like the new technologies, man. I, I really do like the new to technologies in this game. Okay, the Nazgul is going to be back very soon. And it's going to be quite difficult to deal with three guys who can fly on your army. You can kill them quite fast, but he's missing out the Lord's leadership. He's only level 4. If, if Lord would be level 5, it's going to be a whole different situation. Again, it's, it's important in every matchup, but it's even more important against Mordor. Because the stuff you want to kill, you want to burst. You know, you don't want to kill him slowly. Uh, unless he's making a mistake like this, uh, dying for no reason. And the trolls are also marching in, taking way too much tower damage. Lourdes will be easily able to get away, and he's only one level away from unlocking the most important leadership for Aizen. Then you can one-shot this catapults, the trolls, the siege tower, the Nazgul, the witch king. You can kill them way quicker. Does he have Warchant? Uh, it's on cooldown. And he never went for the combos. Hey, that's going to be the first combo he's going to make. Darkness is going to be available. It's going to be used. The Siege Tower couldn't get the chance to trample. It's to tick. The reason why Isengard is still in the game after losing so much is the top side. You see, there is a lumber level, level 3 Lumber Mill, level 2 Lumber Mill. He's getting so much value out of that. As the army Isengard has to recruit is so expensive, he needs the money for this. He needs to invest 600 for each combo. And then around about 1000 for the upgrades on these combos. So, 16 to 1800 for each combat battalion with upgraded heavy armor, banner, and also fire arrows. There comes the war chant, but the catapults are painful to de be dealt with. He's stalling until the rain is available, but the siege will not wait. But Saruman will make it out. Can the wizard turn this game around? He needs to use a fireball on this catapult, but it will get the chance to shoot one more time. The trolls are charging in. Rain is almost available. Lords is thinking the damage for no reason. There comes the warm tongue, and he will be able to steal one of the trolls. Rain was not used, but this troll is charging in. It might deal good amount of damage. He will be able to knock down one of the drummer trolls. Six power points for Isengard, and Mordor is getting surprisingly close to his Balrog. The troll which was stolen will be taken down. And the fight is gonna be stalling a little bit. Um, there comes the land from Mordor. Isengard has the chance to cover this, will be covering this. And the good thing is, he is still holding on his freezing rain. However, this land will be, be will be kind of like a, like a handicap for Aizen. As this is the land from Mo Isengard. 
it can be used from Mordor to recover the leadership he will lose from the Freezing Green. Uh, the Vorks are going beautiful, 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 getting close to the Thunderbolt ability, which is dealing hella damage. Um, smart move also putting some crossbowmen inside. The Witch King won't be able to deal any damage. And the Mordor player is finally realizing, okay, that there might be a reason why this Aizen has the money he has. So I need to take care of the map before I fully commit. Fireball on the catapult. Isengard closing the gap, gap and the distance in the power points between him and his opponent, the Mordor player Mathieu. Also this Siege Tower will be taking down 10 power points against 16, still a huge lead, 60 person ahead in the power points. Um, so only 4 power points away. However, Lourdes got level 5 though. Look, you can see already the glow has changed. The army is glowing stronger and better than ever before. And Mordor should stop to send his catapults unprotected one by one. He should always guard the catapults, babysit them. A beautiful shot. You can see how devastating a catapult can be. That's like the major counter to the to the army with leadership. Because fighting army against uh, with leadership is not quite easy in this game. And there are some units, for most of them are siege units, and summons that can deal with this. Sharku has been recruited too. Sharku is actually not a bad choice against Mordor. He has a good uh, splash damage trample. So you can trample orcs quite easily. Kill a whole battalion in a second. And then later on you can send him into trample combos. Or to take down the catapults. You know. Obviously he will not be the greatest. When you fight against trolls and Nazgûls. But trust me on that one. With the level 6. My Vork is hungry. He will get such a big damage boost. It will even give him the chance to one you on a troll. That's how strong he will become. And his damage also against structures, not too bad. He's attacking quite frequently, as you can see. So even a hero you can you could be using for the map control. And Nazgul's not gonna deal too much damage to him, even Witch King. So he needs to hit him like 20 times to kill Sarim, uh, the Sharku. And his leaderships are only affecting the Vork Riders though. So it's not gonna add too much value to the infantry base playstyle. Ooh, for a fine hit. But the scary part is the power points, okay? Almost 18 power points. Saruman can use Fireball on repeat every minute in 15 seconds. Um, trolls are charging in. But nice split. I like the split here. Uh, the trolls will die. There comes the War Chant. Now the focus. But there are not many crossbowmen remaining on this uh, combo battalion. Um, and, you know, you see quality beats quantity here. Witch King will be barely able to survive, but he killed all the trolls. Saruman was able to use the fireball, uh, the, the warm tongue. Uh, Gollum can finish him off. Gollum against uh, Smeagol, Smeagol against... Oh, but the Witch King is coming and saying, Wizard must pay, but he will pay in exchange for this with his life. Now, only Lutz is remaining. He will be barely able to get away. And we have Balrog. Never mind. He will be summoned on top of Lutz. And... Losing all of this stuff also give Isengard a lot of power points. He's only two and a half power points away from his own Balrog. Um, but I think he won't be able to get it. There comes the Breath Fire. Not the greatest Breath Fire of all time. But it was able to destroy two structures. And with Balrog, if you time it well, you have always the chance to use Breath Fire twice during the summon. So Breath Fire cooldown is 23 seconds. And you have a minute chance, you know, to use it. So you can only use it maximum two times. Now, I, I would not use it here. I would fly here and use it here to destroy these three structures instead. Um, even though the Balrog was a success and it dealt a lot of damage, the beast from Aizen won't fall because there is no follow-up to finish off the work what Balrog started, okay? So he will be rebuilding the beast. There are still two level 3 furnaces. He has still the top side and going finally for the Uruk pit, realizing, okay, I need more money. I need more army. And I need the army a bit faster. There comes the Mordor Airways. Airlines. And uh, Mordor of course has more eco. Because he doesn't need to invest that much money. He needs to only make a troll and a catapult. And the reason why he has to pay that much money for the catapult is because he didn't go for the blacksmiths here. If you go for the blacksmiths it will also make your siege weapons a bit cheaper. Of course, Saruman has to be revived. That's a lot of money you need to invest for the Saruman. Uh, Lourdes has to be revived, which is even more important hero because he's level 6. He has not a pillage. 
which means extra resources. Sarman is level 7. Level 9 is required for the for the Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt can be so good against Mordor too, because once you use the Freezing Rain, the Trolls will lose all their leadership. So if you land the Thunderbolt on the massive Troll army or on the Catapults, and you have a very long range to cast this, you can actually get yourself a huge advantage in this battle, you know? The Catapults will be finishing off the work. The army is rotating to save the outpost, but I think it's too little, too late. Um, that comes to War Chant. And the Vorks are gonna do a good job here. They will finish off the catapults. The Naz they have the fear resistance, it won't affect them. They are with the Palantir. And the Nazguls will die quickly though. Unless unle unlike the Witch King, they are not that resistant. That's gonna be a W for Aizen. He will be able to stall the game. And but he forgot to fill up the bees. So now he has the power points also for the Balrog. Um, however, you want to always be using Balrog. Be careful here with Lourdes. Level 7. That's dope. Don't die. And now you see you get money for killing all of this stuff. Not too much for killing orcs, but it's like active all the time. Lourdes has to just stay close. 7 for killing orc archers. And Isengard needs all the money he can take. Um... And the siege will continue, right? There are three catapults. The Zita has been destroyed for the second time. And Balrog is going to be available. He might need to cast the Balrog here. The army is too far away. So in order to save this, he needs to cast it here. He will be casting it defensively. The catapults will get one-shotted upon the summon. And the Witch King is riding it down. He didn't pay attention. He could have whipped him. I don't think it's going to one-shot him unless he's um, ignited. But at this point, it's all about the uh, economical advantage of, of Mordor, right? He can always keep doing what he's doing. And because of the mystique of losing the heroes like this... Oh, 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 Witch King, Witch King, Witch King, Witch King, Witch King. Nice. He actually targeted something to get to fly a bit faster. He was targeting the Balrog. Whenever you target something or you right-click on something, you don't need, even need to right-click. You can always guard an area where you know there is an enemy building at. You will... You know, or they are Nazgûls and Witch King to fly a bit faster. Prefire doesn't one-shot production buildings because he was not ignited. And even if he would be ignited, it would still not one-shot a building as the Prefire deals only 6,000 damage. And now there are only two towers, but the Witch King is low. Uh, two towers plus the two furnaces. They are all shooting at this Witch King. And the catapult, of course. Um, he's fighting until the end, but the Balrog from Mordor will be available for a second time very, very soon. The will rise from our new and Lourdes. Lourdes, the one-man army. He's trying his best, bro. He's trying to make stuff possible, but it's easier said than done. What can the one-man do? He's going to be able to survive. Trolls are saying, no, Lourdes, get over here. But there is backup for Lourdes, a level 3 crossbow man. And the rain is available for the for the big fight. He can't even revive his Saruman. He went for the devastation though. There comes the rain. But only two crossbowmen, not even healthy crossbowmen, are remaining as the army from Isengard. And that's what would happen if Saruman... Saruman... There was a reason why Saruman was uh, teaming up with Sauron. Because he was too scared. And that's the... You know, proof that he was right to be scared. You know what I mean? As Lourdes goes down, his best servant, the Nazgûls arrive at the Isengard orphan. As Saruman declined the, you know, collaboration with Mordor and paying with his life for this. I mean, what a, there, was good, there was a good game, actually. Isengard had definitely the chance to win. Rushing there with his army was not the best idea. I think you should always play it slow. Unless you have, like, a big momentum, then you can go for the base. But you need a more healthy army for this. A couple of mistakes have been made. Losing the heroes, Saruman and Lourdes, multiple times will always hurt you. You need to heavily rely on your heroes in this matchup. But regardless, it was a good game. I hope it was fun for you to watch. 
And if it was, make sure to leave a like, subscribe, and also leave a comment down below about your most favorite matchup in BFME 1. I will see you next time. Until then, take care of yourself. Keep hitting like a truck. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out, boys.